My name is Samia, I'm with the Lexington Public Library, and you may have seen me before on Sing Along with Miss Samia videos. And if you have seen more than one Sing Along with Miss Samia video where I play the ukulele, you may have thought to yourself, wow, she has a bunch of different ukuleles. I do have a bunch of different ukuleles. <laughs> so because it is Collections and Hobbies Week, I wanted to do a video where I showed you some of my ukuleles and talked to you a little bit about them, teach you a little bit more about the different sizes and types of ukulele. Um, and then I'm going to teach you how to play three really simple kind of foundational chords for the ukulele. So with these three chords, you can literally play dozens if not hundreds of songs with just these three alone. Um, so if you bought a uke during quarantine and you haven't yet learned how to play it, stick around, I'm going to show you. But if you're interested in learning more about the different types of ukuleles and seeing the one I have, that's what we're going to do next. So let's start that journey together. Alrighty, so the first ukulele I have, uh, this is a Kala Waterman. It's actually all made of plastic, so it's waterproof and it's really easy to clean, which is great for like right now. Um, and it's see-through, which is really fun. So this is a soprano ukulele. So when most people think of the ukulele, hear a ukulele, picture one in their mind's eye, the soprano is what they picture. It's kind of the classic standard size. Um, it's gonna be the highest pitched. It's also gonna have like the brightest kind of most jangly sound. So again, if you don't know much about the ukulele, this is probably what you think of and what you hear when you think about a ukulele. So I'm going to play a little sample for you. Let's get the sound to pick up here. Yeah, so not bad for a plastic instrument. Um, so this, again, this is the soprano size, and this is a really good beginner instrument. I play a larger version of this in story times at the library because, again, it's super easy to clean and it's really durable. So if little ones want to take a turn on it, they're not going to hurt it. Um, so I recommend this one if you've got a little kid who likes, who wants to play the ukulele, or if you just want something really durable and inexpensive to take with you to go camping or anything like that to the beach. Um, so yeah, this is a standard soprano. So let's move on to the next size now. All right, so this next one, this is another call as well. Um, this is also a soprano, but it's a little bit different. You may have already noticed. Let me compare it to the soprano from before. So as you can see, the body is the same size, but the neck on this one is longer. So this is what is called a long neck or sometimes called a super soprano. Um, so this one is really great because it has the same sound as a soprano, that same classic ukulele tone, but the neck is longer. It's actually a concert size neck, which you'll see a concert next. Um, so it is a little bit more comfortable if you find this soprano neck a little bit too uh, short and restrictive if you've got larger hands, longer fingers, anything like that. Um, this one is a lot more comfortable to play because it gives you more space, but you still get the same sound. So let me play this one for you. So this one sounds a little bit nicer and richer than the first one because it is a wood instrument with a solid wood top, which is always going to sound a little bit nicer. Um, but it's still got the soprano tone with just a bit more comfortable neck. So let's look at the concert size next. Alrighty, so as you can see compared to the soprano I was just holding, this is a much larger body. So this is a concert. Um, this one is a Cordoba. It's one of my favorites. Um, this one is a really good beginner size as well for somebody who thinks a soprano is just a little bit too small and wants to start on something a bit bigger. I do find it more comfortable to hold a concert size body, even as a smaller person. I think that's really nice. Um, and the tone is also going to be a little bit deeper, a little bit less bright and gentle angly than the soprano sound. Um, so this is a good beginner size. A lot of professional ukulele players rock a concert. Um, so let me show you, let me play a sample of this. you can hear that that little nuance difference. It's just a little bit deeper, a little bit richer, and it sounds really nice with a lot of songs. Um, so I've got one more size to show you. Let's get to that one. All right, so this is the last of the four that I'm going to show you. This one is a tenor. So as you can see, let me show you compared to the concert. It's a bit bigger than a concert, a bit longer neck. Um, this one is an Ohana. It's really nice. I really like this open headstock here. Um, 
So a tenor is really good if the concert is still not big enough for you, if you want something even larger. Um, a tenor also really has the richest sound of the four of these. It's a little bit deeper, almost closer to a guitar-like sound. So if you play the guitar, you just really like guitar sound, but you want a ukulele, tenor might really be good for you. Um, I actually thought I might not like playing a tenor because it would be too big, but I find it really comfortable and nice. Um, so let me play this one for you. So a little bit of a deeper sound. It's really nice. And this long neck too is really comfortable. Um, if you like to finger pick and play up to the higher notes on the neck, you really probably want one of these longer neck models like a concert, a uh, super soprano or a tenor so that you can get up high. It might be uncomfortable on the soprano. Um, so these are kind of the four most popular sizes of ukulele. There are sizes that are smaller than a soprano and there's also bigger than a tenor. Those are a bit more specialty, so I don't really get into those in this video, but if you're interested in them, I'll post some information about the different sizes as well. Um, but these are the four I play. These are gonna be the most standard sizes for beginners. Um, and I'm gonna use my tenor actually to show you now are three chords. So stick with me, get your ukulele ready if you haven't gotten it ready, and we're gonna get started learning. Alrighty, so the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the strings. Um, so let's name our strings. <laughs> this is the G string, the one that is the closest to the top of the ukulele or the, the closest to your chin, if that helps you when you're holding it. So this is G. We can also call it the first string if numbers are more comfortable for you. This is the G string or string number one. The next string is C. So that's the second string away from you. So we can call that C or the second string. The third string is E. So that's E, the third string down. And then the string that's closest to the bottom of the uke if you're holding it and furthest away from your body is A and that's string number four. So that's G, C, E, A, or one, two, three, four. We'll use both terms just for whatever is easier for you. So now that we know the strings, let's take a look at the frets we're gonna use and we'll put them all together. Alrighty, so let's take a look at our neck of the ukulele, which is where we're gonna play on our frets to form our chords. So all of this here is the neck, and then right up here we have our headstock. So the headstock is where the strings attach and where we have our tuning pegs. So that's of course the very top of our uke. And then as we come down on the neck, we have the frets. So for our sake, each of these squares is what we're gonna to refer to as our fret here. So we're going to be only be using the first three frets today. So we are going to say that the top fret closest to the headstock is the first fret. The middle one down, the next one down, is the second fret. And the third one down is the third fret. So this is what you would call the frets normally. You start up at the top with fret number one and you go all the way down. Um, so we're gonna use the first, second, and third today. So let's start off with the C chord, which is your most basic, most important chord you need to know for playing the ukulele. With, for the C chord, we are going to press down, typically with your ring finger for the C chord, on the A string or the fourth string, pressing on the third fret. So we're pressing the fourth string or the A string on the third fret. We don't press any other strings and then you're just gonna strum all of your strings together to make that chord, ready? So that's what your C chord should sound like right there. Alrighty, let's take a look at an F chord next. So for the F chord, we are going to press down on the E string or the third string on the first fret. So press that down. And then we are going to press down on the G string or the first string on the second fret. So we're gonna use two of our fingers this time. Let me curl those out of the way. So we've got our E string on the first fret and our G string on the second fret and we're gonna strum that. Ready? So that is what an F chord should sound like. So we've got our strings here, that's an F chord. Now we're gonna learn the last one, which is G7. 
All right, the last chord we're gonna learn today is G7. So this is gonna use three fingers, but I promise it's not that hard. What we're gonna do first is we are gonna press down on the E string or the third string on the first fret. So just like where we had it for the F chord. And then we are also going to use the second fret. We're gonna press down on the C string. I can redo my fingers there, on the C string and on the A string. So we've got the bottom three strings all pressed down. For the C string or string number two, we're on the second fret. For the E string or string number three, we're on the first fret. And for the A string or string number four, we're on the second fret again. So we're kind of making a little triangle with our fingers for G7. So let me play a G7. So that is what G7 should sound like. So those are our three basic chords, and I will go through and slowly show you again the fingering and play each one of them again for you so you can see them and hear them one more time. Thank you so much for joining me and I really hope this video was helpful to you in learning your first three ukulele chords. Uh, so if you're just starting, there are so many songs that you can do with just these three chords. They're really all you need to begin and you'll be amazed with what you can do. If you have any other questions, please ask them in the comments. I would love to be able to answer them if I can. If I can't answer them, I would be so happy to find you resources or connect you with other people who are way better at this instrument than I am, by the way, <laughs> to be able to help you um, on your ukulele learning journey. But I hope this was a really good first step in seeing some of the types of ukulele and learning a little bit about how to play on your own. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!